<laughs> Can we move on before I lose my mind? Hello and welcome to part three of three. It feels weird that it's the final video now that we're doing for 2022. I know. Um, it's been quite the year. Yes, and unlike the two pre videos before, this has nothing really to do with the videos that we've done in the past. This is just a little Christmas special. Mm. Um, Hence not the sure jumper. When, not sure when you'll be seeing this, hopefully before Christmas. Um, if not, then you'll probably it's be seeing next it. year's Christmas yeah. special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, save us a job next December. Sam and I, 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 we're doing off 10 favorite Christmas songs. I don't, and also our one least favorite as well, which we'll do just before we reveal our number one, hmm. um, which is interesting because I don't think we've had many conversations about Christmas songs. No. How do you feel about them generally? Yeah, just as a genre. I don't think we've ever gone into detail about what do you think about this yeah. song? Yeah. How and it could feel... be absolutely any era, any artist that yeah. comes up. We're literally just we're pulling together a genre. It's like saying top 10 rock songs. How do you feel about Christmas music in general? Like um the hit or miss, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, I don't think a good one has been made in a very long time because I think a lot of Christmas songs these days are trying to replicate the magic of what what the big ones were for. So you'll see in my list a lot of, well, I think pretty much all of them are from the 20th century. Yeah. Don't get any from my lifetime. I think um, all of mine are as well. Maybe one from yeah. the 20th century. I, I don't know. I wasn't there, but it yeah. did, definitely seemed like more genuine like the, the songs that are there and also just they it seemed like they were trying to make good songs rather than just trying to get to the top of the christmas number one and just mm -hmm. doing it by any means necessary but it's also oh. like i feel like a lot of the time when artists come out with a christmas song or a christmas ep or a christmas album it's all just covers anyway so yeah of the songs yeah. for the most part that are yeah. featuring in my list yeah. so so I mean, not to disparage people that do make Christmas music these days. I I hope at some point to see a good one again. I think I think for me with Christmas music for a while I was averse to it. You know, I feel like we all have that rebellious teenage phase, and part of my teenage phase was all Christmas music is cheesy and bad. And uh, you know, I think I've talked about this in the Beatles video actually, how I was a big John Lennon guy and I was really edgy in what I liked in my music for a while. Um, but now I've sort of come to the Paul McCartney side and obviously a bit more chipper and a bit more optimistic. And uh, thus, a lot more Christmas songs have tickled my fancy over the last couple of years. So, um, that was me you tickling know, your fancy. I do have one honourable mention that I'm just going to chuck out there. Oh, OK. A bit out of left field. Um, it's a song called Beer for Breakfast by The Replacements, um, oh. which uh, is not really a Christmas song, <laughs> which is why I didn't include it. Oh, it's not list. in the list, yeah. <laughs> but... I, well, my honourable mentions enjoy the silence. <laughs> not a Christmas song. <laughs> Just want to mention that I like Depeche Mode. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. There is a point to this. <laughs> I, I, can, I could probably justify it, but it would be a stretch. Okay. Because... There's a line in the song where Paul Westerberg just just randomly chucks in "I'm dreaming of a white Christmas" in the middle of the song, um, All right. which has nothing to do with the rest of the song. But anyway, it's a great song, and I feel like it's worth me shouting it out because yep. it mentions Christmas, and not many people have heard it. So, well, thank you for mentioning it so honourably. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's a lovely little B side, um, <laughs> and I'm fond of it. But. Let's get to proper Christmas songs. Yeah, um, let's jump on into it. I've got most. I've got a few quite traditional picks, and I've got a couple a bit more um, out there, but they're all they're all proper Christmas songs. Don't worry. Okay. My proper number ten. Songs. Yeah, my number ten is. Uh, well, I know Tavi will, will probably be watching this from the Discord. Hi, he's Tavi. A big, he's a big George That's Michael. Fan. Big George Michael fan. And he'll be happy to see that my number 10 is Last Christmas by Wham. Um, 
again a song i hated before <laughs> it's the kind of thing that i would associate with bad christmas songs but um you know what i find so nice about it is that it's it's very softening it's very sweet and it's it's pretty catchy and fun and i kind of like when a christmas song isn't just i love christmas it's like got an extra meaning to it as well yeah. the relationship in the song um so yeah, Last Christmas comes in as my number 10. Um, I do like it. Um, not my favourite, obviously, but no. good enough to make the list. Not even your ninth. Yeah. Right. My number 10. Um, I'll be interested to see if like, we know each of the songs that we're going to list off. Mm -hmm. I didn't I'll, know make, the I'll make a playlist, by the way, of all the songs and put it in the The display. ones that are approvable. Yeah, they pass through the, the, uh, the Tom and Sam test. My number 10 is Stop the Cavalry by Jonah Louie. Interesting. Okay. Do you know that one? I do know it, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like Jonah Louie. Um, he can't really sing, bless him. Um, and, you know, he's out there, he's trying. Um, it's, about, <laughs> it's about a soldier being at war and not wanting to be. I mean, you know, we've been there. And... Um, yeah I, I it's it's very catchy um <laughs> uh for the longest time in my childhood there's a there is a, a lyric in there saying wish i was at home for christmas um but when i was a kid i thought it because jonah louis sounds so miserable in it i thought he was saying wish i was alone for christmas <laughs> and you know what i was just like vibing like yeah get that <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was alone for Christmas, and then it went da, 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 da. <laughs> and oh, and then I learned what the lyric was, and I was like, "Take me back," because like, you know that was a mood. But yeah, it's just fun story tied to that one, and so uh, it's my number ten. Well, it's my number nine. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's going to be really funny, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. <laughs> um. Pretty iconic vocal melody, I would say. Like you said, very catchy little song. I don't have much to add. I think you talked about it very well. Um, it's fun. I can't help but enjoy it. Um, again, not always been my favourite, but in recent years, it's kind of crept up there, and I do enjoy it nowadays. Cool. Uh, last Christmas is my number nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so my reason for it is because I think George Michael's pretty good, bless him. Uh, I kind of like that the song is actually, it's, it is very catchy, but it's not really a very positive song. It's mm -hmm. about heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's prevalent around the holidays. You think about things that have happened in your life and you think about, some of the more hurtful stuff, think people you miss, things that you've done. It's a time of reflection. And I think last Christmas is a great sign of you, like, you're thinking of these things, but you're coming through this year to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, it is a ball. You know, you yeah. can't really deny it. When you think of Christmas, I think it is one of the staples now. So that's pretty cool. I, I think the one thing with that song is that is one of the songs which by the end of Christmas I'm the most sick of because yeah. it's the one they play in the supermarkets and stuff. The yes. most. So it's the one you hear the most often. Yeah. But I do I still should. think it's... When, when December comes around, I always think, yeah, good song. I should just clarify, <laughs> though, Last Christmas, the film uh, that was made with the George Michael um, songs on it, um, is just rubbish. Um, it's so cliche and there is a reason why it doesn't get any play anymore. I saw it in the cinema in November, which if you know me, I do not like Christmas stuff in November. Um, <laughs> but I, I watched it just because I knew I was in for a film full of cliches. And I just want to make it perfectly clear. I like Last Christmas by Wham, not Last Christmas starring Amelia Clark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Amelia Clark. Yeah, she didn't deserve it. She got it though. Got it. Um, my number eight, a um, bit of a contrast to Last Christmas, is Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney. Uh, how could it not make the list? I'm yeah. a Beatles fanboy. Um, and it is literally one of the most quintessential 
Paul McCartney songs I talked about when I'm yeah. 64 being the most one of the most Paul McCartney songs you could ever have this is one of them too it's so optimistic yeah. and bright and chipper and just so warm and nice and yeah. some people are probably put off by that because you know if things are too sugary and nice some people like I used to be would be like Ugh. but um I think I think it feels so right that he of all people wrote a Christmas song. Yeah, I think, and it's it, from the album. Yeah, yeah, McCartney too. <laughs> McCartney album. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's just a classic song. I think I I think it's pretty timeless and uh, yeah, wonderful yeah. Christmas time is my number eight. All right, I'm also going Beatles, but the wrong one for my number okay. eight is Happy Xmas Brackets War Is Over by John Lennon, mm-hmm. um, which is it's very Lennon. Um, yeah. but not too Lennon um, wouldn't it be great if I just ended my critique there <laughs> no I think again it's a song with a little bit of depth John Lennon definitely liked to have a message um, whether you like it or not um, you know it's I, I, I like a Christmas song that has a little bit of meaning he's, he's you know it, it's why people like Band-Aid. It's, it's, it shows you, you know, just because you're happy doesn't mean everyone is. And there's a lot of mm-hmm. bad in the world. And, you know, it's that, that's, that's the message of the song. Is, um, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's a, it's a funny one, um, but I like it. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, it might surprise you that that won't be showing up on my list. Um, it's, it's okay. I don't mind it. Um, yeah, I'm just not sick of it, and that's that's really what it comes down to. With coming points. up with a list of Christmas songs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my number seven um, is going to be from, funnily enough, a band massively associated with summer and not winter, and it's the Beach Boys with Little Saint Nick. What a lovely little song this is. Um, I just think it's so and it's funny like they did a Christmas album a lot of covers and this one was written by Brian Wilson and Mike Love and it just it's, it just feels odd that they wrote a, a twee little Christmas song but yeah because really they hate do. each other yeah <laughs> that's family for you you know at exactly. Christmas you've got to come together and just kind of suck it up but um, it's just the pure 60s pop delight to me it's one of the most iconic Christmas songs for me personally um, I think it's very catchy, very fun. Um, and yeah, I just think it's that cool contrast with the sort of the surfer summery harmonies. But in a Christmas song, it doesn't feel quite as sort of cold and icy. Like how many Christmas songs have sleigh bells in them? Like <laughs> it's like they're trying so hard. like, it's winter. You need to know how cold it is outside. And this song kind of does that a little bit, but it it's still got that enough bright optimism and and... Yeah, I like that about it. So Little St. Nick is my number seven. Fair play. My number seven is uh, Feliz Navidad by Jose Feliciano. Wow. Um, I know. It's such an earworm. Like, <laughs> that's that's all I have to say. It, one, once once you think of it, that it's, it's with you all day. I don't think uh, I've heard that one. Really? Hmm. Oh. Well, um, enjoy this. Enjoy this moment. Because once once you've heard it, you know it. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. He doesn't know the song. <laughs> doesn't know the song, I no. I just embarrassed myself on YouTube. <laughs> you've done plenty oh. of that already. Huh? <laughs> you've done plenty of that already. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, why break the habit of a lifetime? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> super catchy. Um it's it's nice to learn a cheeky bit of Spanish to get on board with the lyrics, uh, and I thought that people knew it, but you know, I'm, I don't. I'm not special, <laughs> but there are people out there that I, I think do. Yeah, so, it'd be I interesting. I have to listen to it when I uh, when I. This get is us old, reaching so. out to be an international sort of fan <clears throat> base. The, the Spanish are going to come, and Spanish-speaking countries are all going to come aboard now because yes. I've condoned... YouTube, YouTube goes all around the world. So yes. Spain, Spanish people, subscribe. <laughs> so at number six, I'm going to do the first of my two... Um, sort of, I don't want to say deep cuts. There are... People know these songs, kind of, but they're not sort of... 
big Christmas songs like all my other ones so far have been. I don't think you'll know this song, Sam. Um, this is Christmas Must Be Tonight by The Band. Um, the no, band. you're right, I don't. Yeah, the band being originally Bob Dylan's backing band, became their own um, <clears throat> solo thing. Well, not solo, because they were a band, you know what I mean? Separate entity. Um, yeah, I, I think to me, this is just a very Tom song. You know, it's a very 70s acoustic song. Um, it's got a really nice vibe. It's got a really catchy chorus. Um, it's just got a great bounce to it. And um, yeah, I think when they play this live, or maybe in the song itself, sort of each member sings a verse each, which is quite nice, I think. Um, and yeah, it's a uh, shout out to Sam St. John, by the way. It was him in his ranking of his favorite band songs that brought me to this song. So I wouldn't have known about it if not for that video. So um, if you're watching Sam, thank you. Um, I get it in my head all year round as well, which is a good sign. It's not just at Christmas time that it attacks me, but uh, yeah. yeah, a bit more of a niche pick. Um, yeah, but I think it makes really sense good. for you. This is quite a 70s channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, to be honest, um, I think most people would get on board with this song. I think it's really great. So, yeah. Okay. My one's going to be a little bit, my number six is, you're going to know it and then you're not going to know it. Mm -hmm. So it's, have yourself a merry little Christmas by the Pretenders. Oh, right. Interesting. See, yeah, yeah, see what I mean? You're going to yeah. know it and then you're not going to know That's it. That's not the, uh, the Christmas song by the Pretenders many people would point to. No, indeed. Um, but I came to discover this song uh, in a very time-honoured Christmas tradition of watching the royal family. Um, for those international viewers, um, when I wasn't watching the royal family, the crown people, uh, the royal family, it's spelt different. It's a sitcom about um, a Mancunian working class family, and it's really good. Um, and the end credits of the 1999 Christmas special played over Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas by The Pretenders. And it's really great melody. I, I think if you get the 2000 Miles single, it's it's one of like the B-sides on it. it. So they did a few Christmas songs to go with it. Um, and there's something, I love the guitar. It's very reminiscent of 2000 Miles. Chrissy Hines vocals is beautiful on it. And it's my favorite version of that song or any of the traditional Christmas songs like that out there because it's very 80s, it's very sort of in, um, poppy, and, you know, I've got a soft spot for Chrissy Hine, what can I say? She's still got it even now, so it's a, it's a nice it's a nice little slower Christmas song that I like to listen to. And it's a nice little tease for all the Pretenders fans who are eagerly awaiting us to talk about them. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> my number five is my second niche pick. My top four are all pretty much Christmas staples, I would say. Um, yeah. My number five is a song called Just Like Christmas by Low, which is okay. uh, another one that's very Tom. It's very melancholic um, 90s song. Um, Low, sort of an alternative rock band from the 90s, uh, have this sort of very cool dreamy sound, almost reminiscent of Slow Dive at times. Um, but this song sort of goes at a nice pace. It does have sleigh bells. So that's that's something. Um, and it is quite a fast paced song, despite being quite melancholic. Uh, it's sort of like got a nice story to it. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a really well made song, a really nice vocal performance. Um, and yeah, again, like the band song, if you haven't heard it, I think it's pretty accessible to most people. It's not mm -hmm. I haven't gone for a weirdo pick here. It's it's a pretty, pretty easy listen, I would say. So, mm. yeah. I, like I haven't heard it, so that's interesting. It's my number five, so we're in the... That's that's also something you wouldn't come across in the normal series, is us talking about a song or an album, and I'm like, oh, I haven't heard that one. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, Tom's gone. Bye, Tom. So my number five is one that's already come up in your list. Uh, it's Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney. Yeah. You've already said what I think about it. It's a great little number. It screams Christmas. Um, it's quite ahead of its time. I think that um, the, the way it sounds, 
Um, it's very 70s, but I think we think it's very 70s because it's such a big song. And I think if you thought about it, the instrumentation doesn't sound that 70s, really. But it's a symbol of the 70s. It's wonderful Christmas time. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. there you go. Um, no, it's a lovely little jaunt and it does make you feel good when you listen to it um, the mm. first 20 times <laughs> each year. Um, but yeah, it made the list, even though it's one of those that you could say suffer from overplay at this time of year. But it's for a good reason. It's a great. If Christmas. you're one of those crazy people who doesn't like Paul McCartney, then I'm sure you're banging your head against the wall every time you hear that song. Um, yeah, well, we'll get on to a topic on that matter um, a little bit later on in the video. <laughs> I'm sure we will. Mm. So my number four, like I said, my top four are let's say the Mount Rushmore of Christmas songs um, for me. <laughs> um, right. Um, so my number four is, I assume you'll know this one, I Believe in Father Christmas by Greg Lake. Um, I'm sure you'd know it if you heard it. I um, think you'd know Philly Navi Dad, so. Well, we'll find out. But um, it's been used in a lot of sort of UK Christmas specials and stuff. For those of you who, who don't like know me. the song, and have heard the name Greg Lake and are thinking, Greg Lake wrote a Christmas song. Greg Lake from Emerson Lake and Palmer and King Crimson. Yes, yes, the progressive oh, rock so. musician Greg Lake <laughs> made a Christmas song. And for a lot of people, it is what he's most known for, which is pretty hilarious. <laughs> like, imagine if, like, Tony Banks made a Christmas song that was a massive number one hit and everyone was like, oh, Tony Banks, yeah, the guy that made that one Christmas song. <laughs> it's the same thing. Like, it's crazy. Um, poor Greg Lake. But what I will say is he made a great Christmas song in making a Christmas song that he would be known for. Um, it, unlike Paul McCartney, it's the last person you'd expect to make a song like this. It's sort of, um, of course, the song I believe in Father Christmas. It's very sort of uh, getting in the spirit, I would say, is how I would sum up this song. Um, yeah, loved it from the first time I heard it. Great vocal performance and a great sound. Great guitar playing on it. So, yeah. Um, I Believe in Father Christmas is my number four. Very nice. I'm pretty sure I don't know it. I didn't know Greg Lake until you said King Crimson. And I was like, oh, I'm, they're, they're a band. <laughs> my number four uh, is Merry Christmas, Everyone by Shaking Stevens. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those songs that upbeat and has like kind of no it has no substance it's just it's just a song it's like merry christmas everyone um but for i just, I just it's a, it's a happy-go-lucky song and you need one of them in in there and i don't think it gets that i don't know i don't listen to that much radio these days but it, i don't know if it's that overplayed these days there's one song in particular that I think everyone just is like, that's the Christmas go-to. Um, and then there's a few that are played a lot. And I think Shaken Stevens was once part of that, but he's kind of falling more and more into obscurity as the years are going on. Yeah. I, I, it's kind of like last Christmas. I tend to hear it a lot in the supermarket or in shops around this time. But again, I go to them less and less because who goes on a high street to shop these days? Like <laughs> nothing there, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, nice. It's a nice song. It, it was considered for my list, but it got beat out by by George. Um, so number three, I mean, it, it, I assumed you would know. I believe in Father Christmas. You'll definitely know this one. Number three is "I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day" by Wizard. Ah, um, which in theory is quite an annoying song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> however, however. When I was a kid, it was my favourite Christmas song. And for that because reason... Because you alone, wished it could be Christmas every day. And for that reason alone, I kind of hold it in quite high regard. I still think it's quite good. There are definitely more annoying Christmas songs. Um, yeah, we'll get and, to that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I toyed with putting this lower originally. I think I had it about six or seven. And then I listened to all these again. And I don't know, there's something about this one. For me personally, the emotional connection to it is very strong. Um, it's not just that I loved it when I was a kid. It's been used in Chris countless Christmas specials from yeah. Benidorm to Black Mirror, which is about as diverse a range as you can get, I would say. Yeah, shows um, your spectrum of comedy. <laughs> pretty much. Um, 
it's good which in both those specials actually it's given quite a melancholic edge to it it's used in quite a sad context which is quite interesting given it's such a bombastically happy song um i think it's quite cool that it's been given that extra meaning um and then i think even if you ignore that it's still a really fun song so um that's my number three Oh, I like that that song means something to you. It means nothing to me, so That's it's right. not my list. Um, but I, I, I'm happy that you've got some nostalgia attached to it. You've heard my nostalgia for some songs, and that's that's kind of part of the magic we try and hold on to at Christmas in the adult cynicism. Yeah. My number three is a song you'll definitely know and you may be quite surprised to find this high on the list. And it's Do They Know It's Christmas by Band-Aid. No, that was, honestly, that was another one that nearly made my list as well. I think it's, I think it's a noble song. I think that what it, what it means is important. And I think that the, the sentiment behind the production is really fantastic. And they tried to replicate it every 10 years, but who the hell is listening to Do They Know It's Christmas 2004? There's a magic to the song from the original that you can't capture again. It, it was an important moment. There was a lot going on at the time that they were striving to achieve. And it's it's rare that you get that kind of unity. Mm. And now it, it, each time they do it now, it's like they're just trying to get on the bandwagon. Like originally they didn't know it was, it, it was likely they didn't know it was going to happen when they originally agreed to do it. But now it's like, yeah, if I do Band Aid, people are gonna see me as a really good person. <laughs> yeah. There's something very sincere about Do They Know It's Christmas, <laughs> the original. Mm -hmm. And it's another song that stands for Christmas these days. And it's very catchy. Uh, it, it did its job to raise awareness of issues. Uh, and it's a Christmas classic. So that's how come it's managed to get to number three. It's certainly more listenable to me than some of the other really catchy, rep repetitive Christmas songs. Yeah, I think I have had that overplayed a little bit, but um, that's why I didn't make my list. But yeah, good, good song. Um, now, my top two, I think, are the only two which I would call truly excellent songs. Um, the others are great for Christmas songs. Whereas these two, I think, stand on their own. And a number two is a song that I never thought would be usurped as my favourite Christmas song. And it is Fairy Tale of New York by the Pope, oh. Kirsty McCall, which I know is the song that everyone who hates Christmas says is their favourite Christmas song. Like, I get it. But at the same time, the, you're the, the, there's, a, there's, I think it kind of defies description in a lot of ways, um, especially how it's viewed in this country. Um, it was number one for the longest time. I'm a little bit sick of it, only slightly. Um, so am I. But um, I love it. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's masterfully written. I sort of I talked about before with um, last Christmas, where you can have a Christmas song that means a bit more and has a bit more going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I think of when I think of this song. I think the dynamic between the two characters in the song is really, really well done. And obviously, Shane McGowan sounds so drunk. Yeah, that's great though. It works so well. Oh yeah, um, and I think that's part of the success is people can sing it when they are absolutely bloody. Yeah. Um, and and I think McGowan and McCall both do a really great job um, on the song. Um, yeah, and it's almost a story in itself within the song, which I think is great feat for a Christmas song. And I, I don't know. I think it, I can't help but think it's a little bit ambitious for a Christmas song. Like obviously now we know that it is this big classic that everybody loves. <laughs> But at the time they wrote it, it's quite got quite a complex structure. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's not just four chords and, ah, yeah, it's Christmas. It's like very, <laughs> you know, it's doing its own thing, which I really, really respect about the song. Yeah. And I think it's hard to remember that because it's so famous. Yeah. And now we know it's a classic, but I think it was quite the risk at the time. Yeah. And they true. didn't name it with Christmas in the, yeah. the title. So, you know, they weren't reaching out for the easy hits. Yeah. So that's my number two. Uh, yeah. Strong silver medal. Fair enough. You know, I respect it. I still do like the song, but I think I need a, a, a season off from it. Um, my, my top two, I agree with you. I think these are really good songs. I would also go as far as to say you could play them all year round. 
and you you can enjoy them just as much it's not cheating to play these songs all year round certainly not number two um which is I think it might be up for debate if you consider it a Christmas song, but it was released at Christmas. It was a Christmas number one for Frankie Goes to Hollywood, The Power of Love. It was, it's, I think it still holds the record um, for being their third consecutive number one and like their third consecutive single, sorry, going to number one. So they have their first three singles in a row all went to number one. It went Relax, Two Tribes, and then The Power of Love. And The Power of Love was such a shift in tone for them. Uh, it's a really beautiful ballad. Uh, and Holly Johnson really does pour his heart out into it. I mean, Relax is, you know, its own thing. Two Tribes had a political message, which he obviously felt very strongly about. And The Power of Love was just so heartfelt and there's a reason why it got covered for that advert a few years ago um it's it's you know an unmistakable christmas song to me even though it doesn't mention christmas i think it has a very strong christmasy feeling and i associate it with christmas so that's enough for me and i think it's a lovely song you can play it all year round because it's kind of vaguely not a christmas song it can be enjoyed wherever whenever um and it just feels very sincere and I, I love its message and I love the way it's executed. I, again, I probably know it, but I don't, off the top of my head, I don't think I do. Oh. So, interesting. Make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so before we go to our number ones, which will be interesting to oh, see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my least favorite Christmas song. Um, I had I did have to think about this a little bit because there's a few I don't like. Yeah. But I kind of figured it would have to come from one artist who has a lot of Christmas songs. And I kind of went against how much he butchered the original. And uh I've gone with it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas by Michael Bublé. Michael Bublé. <laughs> oh my fucking god. I hate this song. This version of this song so much. The original, the, the older versions of it, I do quite enjoy the sort of the crooner-ish style that they go for. Yeah. Michael Bublé cannot pull it off at all. I think his voice is like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> um, uh, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, his, he does. His, his appearance on SNL with John Hamm was very funny. I'm not, going, I'm not slamming against the man. But his singing voice is not for me at all. Um, just, ugh. ugh. I just... <laughs> I hate this song. I hate it. Um, and whenever it, it does, it's another one that comes on quite a lot, especially his yeah. version. And it's like, why aren't you using I know. a version by someone better? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, he also did Let It Snow, Let It Snow, right? He's done a lot. Which that one is also quite bad compared yeah. to the Sinatra version. Yeah. But dear me, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas gets, gets the victory of the worst song for me. Preaching to the choir here. Yeah. Um, Seeing as we had to pick one song in particular, I wanted to nominate um, All I Want For Christmas Is You by coming. Mariah Carey, because yeah. it is overplayed to buggery. Uh, Mariah Carey is a class A bitch, and the song is vapid as hell. And yet, for some reason, whenever I'm out and it's played, everyone's loving it. And I feel like I've had the pill. In the Matrix, I can't remember the colour, but I just, like, am I the only one that's seeing how ridiculously crap this song is? It's just, been, it's there too much. It's so in your face. And you know Mariah loves it. <laughs> you know she feels it. You know she thinks she's the best thing, that she's God's gift to Christmas because of it. She loves it. She loves herself. And you're giving it to her on a silver platter. But apart from that, <laughs> I do also want to point out that I hate the impact that Michael Bublé has had on Christmas because you're, he's released a lot. He did like a Christmas album, I think, of covers of different Christmas songs. And now it's just like, hey, it's Christmas. Let's get out Michael Bublé. And I'm like, no, I'm going to strangle you. 
because I just cannot be doing with any of them. I was at a Christmas party um, and they the music over the course of the dinner was just Michael Bublé Christmas songs. And it genuinely ruined the meal for me. I, I cannot stand him. You're right, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. The one where it's like, starts coming down. That's a shit song by, when it's sung by him. Um, he did Jingle Bells, which is shit. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells. Like he said, he's not pulling off the whole like wannabe Sinatra thing. Um, it's like, please g- give up, you know, I mean, that, that, you know, you do know. I know you know. And I, I just, I, I, I wasn't going to mention Mariah Carey because I think for some people they just think that I'm bitter, uh, and I am. But I just, I just want to make it perfectly clear that if, if anything, we should just not give any win to Mariah Carey. But I would still, if you said, ah, but what if we played "Let It Snow" by Michael Bublé or "Christmas" by Michael Bublé or any Christmas song by Michael Bublé? Especially any song by Michael Bublé, yeah. uh, Christmas specifically at this time, because that's when he raises his little gnome head. Um, no problem with the real man himself. Um, <laughs> just the, the man on the album cover is the man. You just, know. just yeah, the fact that he's he's kind of taken over Christmas. I'd still take Mariah Carey over that because I think her song can be enjoyed more than anything that he has put out for Christmas. So. That's where I stand. Uh, Mariah and Michael can just leave. Yeah, I I don't hate All I Want For Christmas Is You as much as you do. However, (laughs) every time I hear it, I like it less. And you tend to hear it a lot at this time of year. Yeah, I think if they start a Christmas party, like the first song they play to get people in the mood is All I Want For Christmas Is You. And for me, it's like, I'm going to have to have some patience before I get in the mood because I'm going to need to ride this storm. And if they play no. Michael Bublé, I may never get the mood. <laughs> As that dinner party proved. Yeah, um, indeed. Have we got the same number one? I, I my think it's unlikely. It's 2,000 Miles by The Pretenders. It's my number one. Oh, look, A Christmas Miracle. Oh, that's, that's miracle. beautiful. Um, now, again, a lot of the reasoning is, I think you'll probably touch on this as well, it can be listened to all the year round. It's yeah. not just a specifically Christmas song, which does give it the beating over Fairy Tale in New York, which I think because you hear it so much in December, yeah. you can't listen to it the rest of the year. I mean, you can, but you'd be insane to do so. Um, 2,000 Miles is just a lovely song. Also, um, the the relevance to everything that happened within the band. Yeah, Jane Tenny and Scott. The Learning to Crawl album. Um, yeah, I, I, it will give away a few of my thoughts on the song ahead of the Pretenders video, but I just think it's lovely. The guitar is lovely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just a great song in general, not just a great Christmas song, so... 2000 yeah. Miles is my winner. Uh, I'm not going to say too much else because we've got a whole video about the potential. Indeed, indeed. And all I will say is that it's, I think it's one of those songs that is not really overplayed much. I think it, when you hear it, it's something very special mm-hmm. because it's normally sandwiched between some of the other songs that we've said, um, that are ones that are repeated often. And when you do hear 2000 Miles, or at least when I do, it just sends me back into a very special place. And it's it, it's like oh but it's like it's like they knew I was listening now and when the, when you hear two thousand miles it's like that's that's my bit of Christmas right there and yeah I won't speak too much about the song but it's it's beautiful it's a song that can be enjoyed all year round I, I even though it does mention Christmas um, and it's just Chris Young once again pulling it together in such a beautiful way. And I love that we've got it as our shared number one. That's the spirit of Christmas right there. Yeah. What a way to cap off a great year. Yeah. Only the second time that has happened with songs, isn't it? After just yeah. one. Um, so <laughs> how, how and to be honest, even more like you think about how many Christmas songs there are. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that we could have pulled Christmas. from any yeah. like band, any group. And let me tell you, it was touch and go with Fairy Tale in New York. It really was, those two. Um so, yeah, 
Um, I just want to thank everyone who has watched not just this video, but any video throughout the entire year. I appreciate it. I know Sam does as well. Um, yeah, I appreciate being here. Yeah. So it's great um, fun. Here's to another year of videos. Sam will be back in the new year with me. Whether you like it or not. In January, that's going to come. And uh, it's going to be exciting to see what we both think of that band because we've sort of been waiting to hear our thoughts for a while now. And hinting like mad over the last few videos. <laughs> yeah, so that's the next time you'll see Sam. Although you'll see him briefly at the beginning of another video coming up, which is quite exciting. Um, but yeah, thank you again for watching along. Um, feel free to comment your favourite and least favourite Christmas songs. Which of these songs on our list do you think was the most surprising picks? If you discovered some new songs, let us know. And with all that said, have a lovely Christmas and a happy new year too.